Uh, and Jonah, well, of course, chapter number one. And Yahshua, chapter number 24. Amen. Amen. How are you, Lord God? You said you're ready, all right? right. Amen. 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 Tammy, you got that back there, girl? Right there. Right now. <laughs> oh, family, take a to raise them. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Look, I, I'm, I bought, my daughter's in the house today. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. She's in the house today, and I mean, but I'm just letting you know, I needed help raising my babies. Amen. Oh, definitely. I mean, especially when I came to the house of the Lord. Oh, I couldn't just do it all by myself. So we're here to help one another. Amen. Putting it out there, we, we, we take the village to raise us. To raise our children, amen. Mm -hmm. So all those little extra hugs, let them children get their little hugs from the people that people got now. They'll go. Love, you know. Love, you know. Bring my big one to get the love. Amen. Yes, Lord God, just say, oh, amen. That's good. They're in a good, safe place. Like I said, it's safe touch up in here. Come on now. Amen. Plenty places you go, but it's safe touch up in here. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Amen and amen. You're there in Jonah, say amen. Amen. Amen amen. amen. Help me hold the ghost. Lord God was born in me. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Fathers, we come right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. We come to say thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to be in the land of the living one more time. As we come praying today, we're asking Holy Spirit for your leading, for your direction, in the name of Jesus. I thank you in advance. The word is already anointed. Father God, allow us to pick up what you're putting down today. In the name of Jesus. And we said amen. Amen. Amen and amen. That's the perfect place to praise him. In the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord God. As we're in the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter number one, I'm going to be beginning my reading at verse number two, all at two and three. Amen. amen. The word of the Lord God says, arise. <laughs> Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to where Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went into it, and to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his almighty word. And we said amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen and amen in the name of Jesus. If you're taking any notes today, the title of today's message is The Decision. Mm. Mm. The Decision. You're like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the title, The Decision. The word today is crossroads. Mm. Anybody at a crossroads oh, today? <laughs> crossroads. Oh, yeah, we're about to get into this in the name mm. of Jesus. As we look at the word, the word of God today, Jonah... Jonah had to make a decision. The reason why the Lord God says he, the word for today is crossroads. Crossroad, and I looked it up, it means to make a crucial decision. Anybody got a crucial decision you got to make that just can't wait? Come on now. It's a matter of life or death. If you don't make this particular decision, well, if that's you today, you're in the right house today because the Lord God says you're at a crossroads. There are two things that are going on in your life right now. And the enemy's telling you to go one way, but God's telling you to go another. And you are at a crossroads. Somebody needs to keep that in the spirit because the Lord God is speaking to you today. I want you to know this message will be a hard one, but I believe you can handle it in the name of Jesus. Because as the Lord God is speaking to us today, it's a crossroad. It is a, a tough decision that you've got to make. And Jonah had a decision to make. Look at the text where the scripture says, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Look at but verse 3 is where the crossword begins. You were like, I don't see the word crossroad. People of God, you don't have to see the word crossroad to know that it's a crossroad. Because I'm mean, going to tell you, a lot of things that you're going through, you would, people wouldn't think you're at a crossroad because of what you're going through. But you know in your spirit, man, I'm at a crossroad. I'm at a place I gotta make a crucial decision. I need to go left, I need to go right, I need to do something. But it is a decision that I've got to make. Jonah had a decision that he had to make. The scripture says in verse number three, but Jonah arose and fled to Tarshish. Where did he go? From the presence of the Lord. I think that's powerful right there because that's where the decision is. That's where the crossword was. You're like, it doesn't say it. It's not a, a large amount of words, but understand that Jonah made a 
decision. His crucial decision was, I'm not going to go do what God want me to do. I'm not going there. I'm not going where, where you want. I'm not going to Nineveh. You ever been in that place? I'm not doing it, God. All right, now. Oh, no, no. You're looking mighty holy in the house today, but no, you can't tell me there were times you said, I'm mm. not doing it, God. I love you, but I'm not doing it. Mm. Come on now. Now, your flesh is saying, yeah, but your spirit man said, there's no way. Lord God, I'm going to be able to do this. And God is trying to tell you, you're at a crossroads. There are some decisions that you've got to make. If you don't make that decision, some things will not take place for you. Oh, I right. told you it's a hard word. It's not going to be too many amens in the house, but it's all right because we need to absorb it deep down in our spirit, man. That God is trying to tell us that there are some decisions that you've got to make today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Mm. And we will rejoice and be glad. And this is the day that you've got to make a decision. You can't wait till tomorrow. Oh, I'm speaking prophetically to somebody. But what decision that you've got to make is going to be done this day, this hour. You can't let it go on till tomorrow because you've let it go on for a year already. All right, now. Mm -hmm. You've been letting it slide. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to let it go. But now, you're in 2021. Mm. The Lord God said it's time to make that decision. Jonah said, look what he did. But Jonah arose. The scripture said that he arose and he went, he fleed to Tarshish. What are you running from? Come on now. When God gives us a decision to do something that we've got to make, nine times out of ten we don't want to do it because we're running away from something. But I want you to know God said stop that running. You're about to run di directly into God. It's not to run away from him, but it's to run to God. The Lord God says, even though you don't understand it, you must understand that Jonah must have won. Why does he want me to go to Nineveh? Why does he want me to go to a place? They're already wicked. The things are not going well for me. And the things are not going well in Nineveh. You have a Nineveh too. A place where God wants you to be. Like, oh God, why do I want to go over there? I don't want to go over there. <laughs> You're like, I don't like it over there. It's not what I really want to be. But the Lord God has said, go to Nineveh. I don't know about you, but there's something that you need to go to Nineveh. Because God said there's an assignment that's got to be done for Nineveh. That's not only going to bless you, it's going to bless you and bless your family. But you've got to be obedient and say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go. Tell your neighbor, uh, it's crossroads. It's crossroads. Tell your neighbor, it's a crossroads. It's a crossroads. Oh, yeah, you need to let them know. They may not understand. They may not feel you right now. But somebody sitting in here is really at a crossroads. There are decisions and pathways that they've got to take. And they're like, Lord, they're just like Jonah. They're about to take off running. They're about to take off. And God said, wait a minute. Because you must understand, people of God, God is trying to let us know that the decisions that you make will affect everyone that's associated with you. Come on. Oh, I'm preaching in the right house. I know Come I am. On. Come Thank on. you, Lord God. Because see, what, what, what we didn't get further, further in our reading, but you must understand when Jonah made the decision at his crossroad, when Jonah said, I'm not going over there. I'm going to get on the boat. I'm going to go to job. I'm going to get on the boat. He, he made a pit stop, y'all. Look. He said, look at verse 3. He fled from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, got on a ship, and then he said, I'm, not go I'm going to Tarshish. See, many people, are, they want to get to where they want to go, but they don't want to do what God told them to do first. Mm. I told you it's tight, but it's right. If you mm. can't say amen, say out. But somebody say something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say something. You must understand that God is calling for you today that you need to go to Nineveh. And the decision that you make is about to affect not only you, but everybody who's connected to you. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I don't see that. Let me look at the scripture. Let's look at the text well. Because when Jonah decided that he was not going to Nineveh, he paid the ferry, got on the boat. Are you going to pay for the bad mistake? Mm -hmm. I told you it's not good. It's not good. He got on the boat. He went there. And surely enough, look, at, look down at verse number five. Look down at the latter part of five. It says, but Jonah had gone down, you see that in your Bible? Into the lower parts of the ship and laid down and went fast asleep. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't have no problem. Mm -hmm. I, there's no worry. I made my own decision. Now, I'm going to just say, I'm going to speak of me. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Like, I've done it. I'm going to do it my way. I make my own decision. And then I'm going to feel good about it. I'm going to just go to bed. But you know what? Something keeps and pressing and saying that you know what you need to continue you need to do what God called for you to do 
Mm -hmm. uh, you need to go ahead and go forward in what God called you to do. Because it's about to affect everybody that you're connected to. I tell you, God, if you stay with me, you're about to get the message right here. The Lord got saved when, when Jonah decided that he was not going to go do what God told him to do. Do you realize that all of a sudden a storm broke out? Mm. And you wonder, what, what did those men, what did those individuals who were sitting with him or on the boat with, what did they do to cause the problem? Mm. The scripture didn't say they did anything. Sometimes some situations that are going on in your life might be because somebody else is being disobedient in your life. You're like, wait a minute, God, wait a minute. That may be because they are not going to Nineveh like God told them to go to Nineveh. And because of their decision not to do what God had, everything else and everybody's connected to them, things are just crumbling apart. God, you ever felt mm. that way? Oh, come on now. Oh, yeah, I'm about to give somebody some freedom over here. I didn't think I'd have to go there, but let me go there with you because some choices, some decisions, some problems that you're experiencing is not because you did anything. It could be because somebody didn't go to Nineveh. Mm. Somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. So all of a sudden, because you're divinely connected to them, you have to go through some things that you were not designed to go through. Jesus. I told you it was a hurtful message right there. It does hurt. And that, that's why, that's why the Lord God said, your decision. So he's trying to teach you, don't repeat the pattern. Don't do what your predecessors have done. Right. The Lord God said, when I tell you to do something, do it. Go. When you get to that crossword, do what I tell you to do. Yeah. Don't take your own, don't take it into your own hands. Because everybody's going to be affected. Hmm. The scriptures seem like, wow, I, you, I pray you don't ever see the book of Jonah like, you, like you're going to see it today. Because you must understand that whenever Jonah did that, a storm, that's my Bible, a storm at sea. All of a sudden, a storm broke out. They weren't doing, everything was fine until Jonah got on the boat. Come everything on. was fine until somebody didn't do what God told them. Come mm. on. Come everything on. was going well. All of a sudden, things were prospering. We were going about a merry way. That all of a sudden, the wind started blowing, turbulent storm. And then they were wondering, who is this person? What's going on? You ever wonder, what's going on in my life? Now, Lord God, I prayed, I passed it, I've done it. Maybe you need to do a closer examination. Come wow. On. Come on. Yeah, you're like, uh, maybe you need to do a social, closer examination. You know what, Lord? That's why I'm trying to teach you something today. Whenever we're praying, don't just, just pray for you. Something to look, I pray just in case. Yeah. I bind up every spirit that may have been attached in my family, my mm -hmm. mother. Because I may not have done something, but just in case they tamper with some things, I renounce that spirit. Yes, oh, Lord. come on now. Yes, so Lord. Like, you're like, I'm never touching that. You never know what somebody yeah. else in your family may have done. Yes, and if they're connected to you, I want you to know if you're not renouncing it, it's already in the bloodline. Yeah. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to be like that all my days. I'm not. Oh, here, here we go. I'm not going to be like my dad. Yeah, that's a, you're so smart. Yeah. You're so smart. I'm not gonna be like him. I'm not gonna be like her. Listen, I need my mom. Some of us, I'm not gonna be like my mom. Oh, okay, oh, oh, okay. You're so special. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not renouncing something, I didn't say the positive. There's a lot of, but the negative that they went through. If you start, you don't get in prayer and say, you know what, Lord, I renounce that. I don't know what may have happened, but that's not for me. And Lord God, I cut. Thing off. Yeah. You gotta be wow. spiritually mature enough yeah. to say, you know, I cut that thing off at the blood, at the root where it will not transfer to me. I'm not gonna operate in poverty all my day. The devil is alive. I'm not gonna receive that bad health right. report all my day. I, they may have had high blood pressure, and so, but I know my blood pressure regular. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Come on now. But see, but you must understand. See, the decision that they made affected everyone else. Yeah. The decision, you're like, well, what does that have to do with Jonah? I'm trying to let you understand that what Jonah did affected everybody on the boat. Yeah. In plain language, the decision that you will be making will affect everybody that's connected to you. Yeah. Hmm. Let me give you a, a better example. Let's do, let's do food, because people can relate to food. Yeah. My daughter, you know, I do not like peas. I don't. No real of all. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, you will not be finding no pea soup to my house. No peas on the table. No, no. Uh, and because I don't care for that, guess what? Don't get served at my house. Peas. Everybody connected to me has it. And and now they may like them, but they will never know because I never expect. Come on now, because of, I told you, every decision that you begin to make, this crop is going to fire you fool because people can relate to that. But God's saying, I wanted you to get the basic of this major decision that you're about to make is going to affect every person that's 
divinely connected to you, whether you think it will or not. If you quit, it's going to affect somebody. Come on. If you decide, well, I'm out of here, well, do you realize that's going to affect somebody else who's connected to you? You're like, well, I didn't really think of it. That's why I'm telling you. That's why the Lord got us. You're at a crossroads. You may not have thought it, but there's some decision. Before you do that, before you say it, you better start praying. Before you make a step, you better pray. And then that's what that's a point that you need to get. See, Jonah failed to pray. You're like, yeah, he prayed. Yeah, he prayed after he got in trouble. <laughs> That's nobody up in here. We don't ever pray and tell with you. Come on now. I know Jonah's not by himself. I'm not trying to put the prophet out there by himself. But see, Jonah did pray, but it's the timing of his prayer. I'm trying to teach you and help you miss that pitfall because, yes, Jonah made a decision. He made a crucial decision. He was at a crossroad, but he failed to do so. He failed to pray before he made his decision. Somebody needs to pray before you make that decision. Lord. You need to pray. Oh my God. Thank the Lord God. Make the decision. Pray about it. Make your choices. Pray about it. Because see, when you pray about it before, you don't have to be praying about to get out of it. All right. When you pray about it before you do it, you don't have to pray the prayer of deliverance to get out of it. All right. Come on. Repeat. Come on. When you pray about it before you do it, you don't have to pray deliverance to get out of it. Yes, yeah. it does. It yeah. does say that. Because when Jonah got in the belly, then he want to pray. Yeah. When he got in the big fish, Lord, <laughs> I'm in the way of God. All of a sudden, is that not a prayer of deliverance? He was yes. praying to get out of the belly. But the Lord God said, had he made the decision to pray whether or not, should I go or should I, he wouldn't have been in the fish at all. Somebody to get there. The Lord God said, before you make that decision, you don't need, you rather pray before you do it. Otherwise, you're going to be praying to be delivered from it. Got it, got it. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. You're like, oh, wait a minute, Lord. You mean, yes, you can miss some pitfalls, some things that are not good for you, some, some headaches, some pain. I don't know about you, but I'm not prone to like headaches at all. Mm -hmm. any, I don't know. I don't think there's anybody that I know like confusion. Anybody you know like confusion? I mean, like, really, like, they're just like salivating, they like confusion. That individual needs some help. Yes, he does. Because no one who really has the right mind in Jesus Christ wants to walk around with all that kind of confusion. So if that's the truth, then, my God, I can save myself some confusion, some problem, if I can just pray before I make my decision. My God. I'm here to tell you, people of God, we're at a crossroad today. We have some decisions that we got to make. And the best thing you can do is start praying and ask God to orchestrate your footsteps. Thank you, Lord God. Don't operate in your fear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, amen. Uh -huh. I said footsteps, not fear. All right, now. I said footsteps, not fear. Because if I don't feel like that, that's not how I feel. Come on. That feeling will get you feeling in the wrong place. Yeah. But see... Ask the Lord God to orchestrate your footsteps. Mm -hmm. and you're like, Pastor, you sound like, I'm not fussing. I'm telling you a life lesson right here. Thank you. But I'm Thank telling you a life because I've done Thank that. I've operated in my field. I didn't feel like this. I didn't feel like things were good. And you know what? At times, I moved when I shouldn't move. Mm. Amen. Mm. I did what I shouldn't have done. Had I stuck it out and been at the cross and prayed and said, Lord God, what would you have for me to do? Yeah. Mm. Even if I don't like it. Yeah. Nevertheless, do. not my will. But thy will be done. Because if there's something better on the other side, if somebody's going to be blessed if I stay in a particular area, then Lord God, it's not my will anymore. It's your will. Then I'm here to tell you, do you realize you're going to save not only you, but everybody who's connected to you? That's right. You're going to save you and everybody else who's connected all by that one simple act. And the Lord God is trying to tell us today that, you know what, we're at that crossroad where we've got to pray and ask the Lord God to orchestrate my feet. See, feelings make you move too quick sometimes. Mm. And I'm not going to, I've, I've moved in my feelings. And you know, when I moved, this, that spirit was still there. It's like, mm. you, I, you're like, you know what, it's not going to follow me out of states. Mm. <laughs> Different shell, same spirit. Mm. You're like, my God. And I know that. You, know, you would have stuck it out over there. I'm going to high five myself because you don't know what I do. Lord, have mercy. Amen. If I would have known that, you know, I could have stuck it out, but I operated in my feelings. And you know.
know what? God blessed and I saturated with prayer and He directed me to make some talk. I, I got off track. Anybody got off track before? Don't need to raise your hand. Just look forward in case Jesus. you don't want nobody to know. But I don't want to know. Anybody ever got off track? Hello. Where you were supposed to do something and you did not do it and it set you back. Anybody ever did that before? <laughs> when you get off track as to what God has in store for you. But the Lord God has a way of maneuvering you back. Uh, yes, Lord. Back. Yes, Lord. He loves you just that much. You know, he's a good shepherd. And he tends to a sheep. He takes his staff and says, get, get back Come on, get back in the fold. Get back in the fold. You know what? You're not destroyed because the wolf didn't devour you. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You still got something to give God glory for. You're still Amen. blessed in other areas. But I want you to understand that the Lord God has come that you've got to make this decision, but it's got to be saturated with prayer. Amen. You've got to say, Lord God, before I choose whether or not if I want to do this thing, Lord God, what would thou have for me to do? Mm. Not my will, but thy will. Father God, if you have for me to do this thing, then Lord God, then let me do it because I don't want everybody in my family to start struggling. I'm at a crossroad today. You see, your salvation, you are at a crossroad. I don't know about you if you never thought, you're like, I've never had a cross. If you're not, if you're saved today, you were at a cross for a long time. It was either on your way to hell or mm. on your way to heaven. All right. Two different ways. And the enemy was sure having a good time with hell over there. Yeah. I want you to know, oh, don't, you can't come tell me. Hmm. Yeah, that would happen. What? All the stuff you wanted. What? Right over there. All that. And the Lord God says, when you choose the cross, Mm. You choose the other path. And the cross is narrow. You're like, they ain't never born people over there. But they don't even know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't even know. They think you're boring. You got all the pictures. Amen. Yes, Lord. 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 You're all, every, all of a sudden you, you're renewed, you're refreshed, you're revived. You're able to make it another day. I'm here to tell you, your salvation was a crossroad. Your salvation, whether you were going to be saved or whether you were going to be saved, you're at a crossroads today. And the Lord God is speaking to you even in this house and saying, you know what? Sons and daughters, you're going to have to make that step. But you're going to have to do it in prayer. Like for Jonah, he finally did get it together. He finally did get it together in chapter number two. And as I said, that's your assignment is the book of Jonah. It's not that big of a chapter. And two, he started crying out for deliverance. But look what showed up in verse in chapter number three. Chapter number three of Jonah and verse one, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. God's going to give you another opportunity to do what you need to do for him. Will you listen? Mm, come on now. God says you're going to be at a crossroad again. See, some of you think that crossroads just happen once. I want you to know they happen often in your life. Major, crucial decisions, they happen often in your life. It's not just one decision that you've got to make. You've got to make decisions for your children, decisions for your marriage, decisions for your education, decisions about where you're going to live, what you're going to do. All those things are crossroads. Oh, somebody needs to get that. It's not just haphazardly the Lord God has you here today because you've got to make some decisions. They're not going to go away. They're not going to sleep it away. You're going to have to say yay or nay. You're going to have to choose in this day whom you're going to serve. What you're going to do? Lord, have mercy. Mm. Come on now. You're either going to walk by faith or you're not going to walk at all. Mm. You're either going to believe God or you're not going to believe Him. What you going to do? Because see, some of us, well, like God, are you going to believe God or you're not going to believe Him? That's it. That's all there is. There's no in between. There's no shades of gray. The devil is alive. There's no form of gray. You can't sit lukewarm and God be pleased with that. You're either going to be hot or cold. What you going to do today? Wow. You're like, well, I don't like lukewarm. Well, I tell you what, you're not going to last too long. You're not going to last too long. I give that perfect example. A pot that's sitting on the stove and a pot that's cooked in a microwave. If you boil the water, which one going to stay hot longer? The one with the fire? But see, you want that microwave blessing. You want to be hot a little while and get warm and feel like, well, I did come to church. <laughs> oh, okay. Like you're doing a badge of honor. Who are you blessing? <laughs> Who are you blessing? Oh, I told you it's tight, but it's wrong. Who are you blessing? God says, he said, you're not coming for me. He said, I ushered you. I'm speaking directly because there's a, you're at a crossroads. If you don't get this word and get that in your spirit, man, knowing that you have got to make some crucial decisions in your, it's not mama's decision anymore. It's not, it's not the boss man's decision anymore. It's not your prayer partner's decision.
decision and you walk alive. Well, no, no, no. The Lord God said, it's in your hands today. That's right. What you going to do? Mm. You're going to serve me or you're going to walk away from it? Mm. The choice is yours. That's right. Mm. Jesus. You're at a crossroad. I know they got a lot of mini God. They got a lot of foolish things going on. Let me not get it. Lord God, help me refrain from that. I don't want to go in that area because I can go all day with that. In that area of just who else is speaking to you. But the Lord God says, you must pay attention to when God is speaking to you. Don't run away from the presence of God. Run into his presence, not out of it. See, Jonah was doing like many of us have done at times. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to be in a problem because you know God exposed everything. Yes. And that, you know what, that, that's, a, that's really the best place we need to be. If God said you got a nasty dis, dis, uh, disposition, you know the Lord needs to tell you that. Don't look at me like I'm from Mars. Not every one of y'all in here be nice all the time. All right. Come on now. Some of you're like, what? You? Yeah, that's you. That's you. You. You say you're favored and you're loved by God, but you got a nasty disposition. And you know what the Lord God said? But see, whenever you run in the prayer, God says you don't need to work on that. He didn't say he was going to stop your blessing, but he said you need to work on it. I don't know about you, but when God gives you that and you start working on it, you'll be surprised how the blessings start flowing in. You're like, wow. But he had to tell you about it. When we're back in the day, we used to call it, tell me about yourself. <laughs> I always feel like a way of telling you about yourself. You don't like this. You know what God said? I don't like it either. Uh -huh. You're like, well, I don't like the Lord. I said, I don't, I don't like how you, you speak. And you know what? We all got those areas. Myself yes, Lord. included. Yes, Lord. You know what? I was like, my God. Uh, yeah, I, I could easily tell about it. Some people was like, you know what? I can't really come to you. I don't know how you're going to receive it. That's just, you know, I'm working on that. That's me. I'm working on I'm like, oh, God, what is it? And so maybe because I, I'm looking dead, I'm looking dead, yeah. <laughs> and some people don't like that. Whenever they, some people don't. I'm just being honest. And, but see, I don't. I like to. I like that right there. That's right. I, I like that right there. And maybe because of my upbringing, or maybe because I've been lied to a lot of times, I don't trust a lot. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, come on. Now, if I didn't have them issues, maybe I'd be like, oh, okay. but no. So every time I'm like this, you know. He's like, what's wrong, Ned? <laughs> I tell them all. It's only because I, I, I got my guard up because of what I went through. And I'm saying that to let you know that, you know, when you're in the presence, God will begin to reveal those areas. So he began to reveal, they see, you need to, you know. So I, I'm learning to, like, uh, somebody said, I know what? I'm learning to, yes. Because I'm automatically thinking something wrong. Straight up the top. Not like, you know, like, you know, and I can trust him. My daughter said she can ask him. She can trust him. She'd be like, Mama, come. It, it's, not, it's all right. But I'm so used to. Anybody ever been there before? When you're delivered, you can talk about it. Oh, you know what? This is truth in the house. We're not sitting up here looking puffed up and made up and looking whole. All right. All right. That's the only way your neighbor will be free. If they know you've been through something, maybe they can get out of that stuff. Come on. Yeah, amen. Amen. And you're sitting there like, well, you know what? I don't. Yes, you too. There are some areas that God says, but when you're in his presence, God's going to begin to reveal something. Right. And so that's the major thing why, why Jonah was right. Because he didn't, wanna, he didn't want God to show him. Because if you read the whole book of Jonah, Jonah had a little issue. He didn't want him to say he had a little height. He's like, kill him, God. I don't know why you protect the Lord. Because they're bad anyway. Yeah. Yeah. He was being a little mini God. He was saying, they're not probably, they already bad. They was wicked before. He was judgmental. Yeah. I know we don't know nobody like that. We <laughs> <laughs> don't know nobody like that at all. <laughs> not at all. Before well, you do anything, oh, Lord God. You can do it. You don't even need to save them. They don't even listen to the word. I go to church all the time. They don't even listen to the word. And then you want to bless them, huh? Uh, that's Jonah. Right. Oh, that's Jonah. Anybody ever? Why, God? And if he was a, Jonah was a prophet. Let's remember his, his position. He was a prophet. And the prophet was like, oh. But when the Lord God removed something from him that wasn't for him, and the Lord God said, just like I did it for you, I can do it for them. All of a sudden, the Lord God dealt with him and his issue. And I'm going to tell you, God trying to deal with us. And you see, you think this crossroad that you're at, I'm about to close, but you want to know this crossroad that you're at, it's not just about making a